Okay guys, back out on the bank. Um, I've come to the pools where I had my first carp of the year from. I was fishing my course gear. Uh, today I've brought out the carp gear. Uh, I've got two nights ahead of me. Um, the weather is pretty cold today. Um, Saturday the 11th of March. So we've just had all that snow. Um, it's cleared here. There's still a bit at home when I left this morning. Um, so it's, I got here. Uh, had a couple of laps of the pool, it's only small, um, it's raining now as you can probably hear, so I'll uh, I'll show you the um, sort of the pool and stuff when it stops raining. Um, I did a couple of laps, I got my deeper out, and then it started raining, so I like, shut the bivy up to get everything out of the rain so it didn't dry. Um, and then it took me, I'm, first night, like I said, first night I had to put new leaders on, it took me a while to get set up, put the first rods in, I'm just about to put the second rod in. First one, I've just gone with a single pop-up. Um, so I've got the uh, Nash Citra, Citrus 12mm pop-up. Um, I've gone with the off, the sort of pale pink one. Um, caught a lot of fish on these, I really like them. And then on the second rod, which I'm just about to put out, I'm going to start off a couple of hours. I'm just going to go with um, my kind of fish for anything uh, method. So it's the heli sleeve. So heli kit rather, uh, coming down to a, uh, a side six wide gate, I think. Got a bit of shrink tubing on there, bits of uh, fake sweet corn and the maggots. The maggots is the bait. The sweet corn just is a bit of separation between the hook and the and the maggots. Don't like having the maggots um, too close to the hook because I've had it before now where they've masked the point. Coming down to a, a two ounce um, feeder, uh, so I'm just going to chuck that out. Um, there's the rods and the net. Um, so I like putting a bit of this uh, pineapple flavouring on uh, on the maggots, just to give them a bit of a boost. Um, it certainly hasn't done me any harm. So I'm going to um, get that second rod out now, and hopefully we get a fish. It's just one because. It is pretty cold, um, one will do, and then we'll take it from there. It is good due to improve dramatically um, tomorrow, temperature-wise. Um, and then I've got Monday day as well. So um, if I'm really struggling, I might jump onto the other pool where I've had my, that first cart from, um, if I'm struggling. But we'll see, see how it goes. So we're now fast forward to the morning. Um, it's been a bit of a nightmare, to be honest. I've uh, got the rods out last night. Uh, say about say about five o'clock I think when we got to have done it was like spitting and stuff not too bad and then it just rained for like seven hours basically and uh, <laughs> mud bath in here um, I'm in a bit of a mess I need to tidy up and that but get something to eat um, but basically um, I got picked up by the ducks twice once at about half five and then at midnight <laughs> absolutely screamed off and then they were all still even though I'd only put um, that maggot feeder with the maggots out they just kept coming back Ooh, there you go. So guys, there's me having a good old moan at the camera about the rain and this, that and the other. And uh, you would have heard the bite on camera. I couldn't film the fight, it was absolutely savage. And I thought, I can't lose it. Anyway, we'll get her out on the mat now, give her away. But looks like a good fish. Okay guys, so that's the uh, common. I can put her in the, um, in the way sling. I've zeroed the scales, so what we get on here is the weight. That wind. <laughs> so I'm going to say. I'm 
I say? Twenty-one pound. Well, it is twenty-one pound. Fight was <laughs> was pretty easy. I say I was going to try and put, get my phone out, but I couldn't risk losing the fish. It was, it was just going nuts. Right bow, absolutely st stunning fish. I'm guessing it's not going to be. <laughs> um, the colours, the proportion, the size, the shape. That is a stunning, a stunning common. 21 pound, absolutely made up with that. On the old trusty maggot rig. Put about a quarter of a pint of maggots. Shit, the other side. With the baiting pole. Found a bit of a clear spot. I could see fish knocking the re re the reeds. Let's put it on the edge. Yeah, this one's ready to go back straight away. Absolutely made up with that fish. Get your nose down there. There you go. Fantastic. Okay guys, this is how I was getting the rig out. So, um, using my baiting pole. Um, it's It's been a good half an hour, maybe a little bit more um, since I've had that carp. Um, normally I'd like to get the rod out like straight away. Um, I don't think I'm going to catch a lot of fish here today. Um, it's more just that while that commotion's gone on, get the cast commotion out of the way, just so you know, so there's not like that long gap. But because I'm using the baiting pole, um, it it doesn't really cause any. That's one of the best sort of things about it is it doesn't cause any commotion. So I've managed to because uh, the fish sort of dragged me all the way through all this. Um, I stripped a couple of metres of line off. It was a bit frayed, so good job I checked it. And, uh, and I've tied up a fresh new rig. So I've got the uh, maggots on there. I've just put a bit of pineapple juice on. Uh, put it in the baiting pole that way. I haven't put any maggots in the feeder because I'm just going to put them straight in the pole. Um, so I'll just tip all that many. Little squirt the pineapple flavour. Um, it's actually only the second time I've used this pole. It's the first time really I've properly used it. Um, it's going to catch. I'm sure it's going to help catch a lot of fish, uh, especially from places like this, where being quiet <laughs> over that wind. <laughs> Being quiet is really important. Um, right, let's just fix that line. So just shipping out. Just got to keep an eye on that. Uh, on the line coming off the rod, you don't want it to uh, be too slack. It's just, I'll take the bottom I'm over. It's not fishing very far out at all. And um, like I said, it's it's really weedy. It's all sort of bay, um, and even in front here, like it's sort of weedy here. And then by that reed, hang on, that one there. Across. there's like a it's a bit of a clear patch so that's where I've had the fish from oh, I should put the wrong put the end section on so before they were knocking in these reeds um, that's why I had the confidence to stick with this because there was, you could see there was clearly two or three fish in these reeds knocking. 
because I had changed it over to a zig, putting it out into the middle. Um, I don't really fish zigs a lot. Well, I've only ever caught one fish on a zig at a commercial. Um, right, let's just get this, see where we're up to now. Do I need any more sections, I think? I think we're about right. So, I'm just going to pick the rod up. I want the rod to be this side. Just because I want the line to exit that side of the hopper so that the rig falls separate so the lead comes down and the rig follows rather than the rig going down and the line coming over the top of it. So that's about the right position there. And I'll just twist him over. And there it went then. I don't know if it'll pick it up, probably no you mean no. But I seen the rig go separately. So so the lead's gone down, the feed has gone down, the main line's gone down and the rig following after it so hopefully it should settle because although it's clear I'm sure there's some. Just give that a bit of a turn, make sure all the bait's out. Just gently slide that back. As, I mean, I know it, the baiting pole is going to make, does make a bit of noise. Um, but it's one of them where they associate leads with. Um, with danger, you know, they heard that sound a lot of times, so it's definitely an edge using a pole. Right, let's put this on. Anyway, today's setup treating himself to the porch, a good job I did because if the rain last night, I'd have been in the right state if I didn't have that bit of an entrance. And here's the swim, so. Like I say, I started off, I got the uh, the deep rail out of a couple of chucks and it's really weedy. I wasn't expecting it at all. Um, it's only about three foot deep as well. So before the rain started, I managed to find a clear spot off the middle of them reeds there. Um, and another clear spot is where I've had the fish from, which is just sort of here. Um, well, everywhere else is just thick. I mean, I've just tried to put um, an adjustable zig out. I can't get it to raise up. Um, but then I've noticed the fish, as I was doing that, the fish were just proper charging round in there. So what I've done is I've got my maggot back here and then I've put the zig sort of just to the right um, because I have seen fish cruising up and down. I saw one yesterday just for the rain. But I've seen about three or four. Um, I don't really use zigs. I've, I've caught one fish on a zig once from a commercial um, where I, it was it was really cold, like December. I was fishing for birds. I just noticed that they were on the top, so I um, put one out and uh, yeah, I got caught like, quite quickly. But I still I don't know. I don't know if it's my sort of. I don't know, a lot of people don't seem to like it. Yeah, that you won't be able to see that, but there's a, there's a carp on the top there. There's some about here. I don't think another two, no, there's two, no, there's about four. I just see the shadows. So they're moving round. So we've got the zig here, and the maggots on the bottom. So fingers crossed, guys, get the wrong. The temperature has gone up dramatically. Um, it's going to be like 10 degrees. I think tonight it's not eight. It's not going to go below eight or something, which is crazy considering what last night was like. But tomorrow I'm going to be packing up in the rain. <laughs> and I must admit, just before I got that fish, I was sort of umming and ahhing, do I go at the end of today? But now I've had that fish. Definitely gonna stick it out. There's some cracking looking fish in here, so hopefully we can get one or two more. 
Well, a bit of a change of plan. I've decided not going to do a second night. Um, just out, so everything is <laughs> everywhere. The rods are still out, so. But, uh, there's quite a few reasons. It's give it rain all day tomorrow, all day. So everything's going to be soaking wet, packing away. Um, the fish have been active in their reeds, but I think I just. After I had that fish, I've sort of killed it. You know what I mean? Um, the ducks have just come. I've had to chase them off four times in like ten minutes. I was falling asleep. It's like four o'clock. <laughs> I was falling asleep, and I thought, I know what's going to happen here. I'm going to have a couple of hours, not be able to sleep all night, and I work night. So tomorrow night in work, I'm just going to be a mess. So I'm probably not going to catch anything. So um, I'm really happy. I've had a really nice fish. Um, nice to get out um, getting all the gear together and uh, you have to sort of it sounds mad but you have to remember I forgot my milk as well so I'm going to also have a brew so I need to go and have a brew get on a proper toilet <laughs> and uh, yeah um, also uh, get the brownie points in it at the end of the day and save your battles isn't it at the end of the day I don't get to fish two nights I might I think I did it maybe twice once twice last year so you know, maybe save it for the weather the when when the weather picks up. But um, yeah, like I say, um, gonna get off. So the rods are still out. I'm gonna tidy up all this. Try and get it as tidy as I can. Some of it's muddy. Some of it's okay though. And, um, yeah, if I get anything, obviously I'll put it in. But if not, tight lines. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.